Right. So we're, first thing we're talking about, we're talking about lab notebooks and we're going to do, work on the worksheet. I'm going to show you how to do stoichiometry problems like the super simple Chem 1B way. There's like a really easy way to do them. Uh, do limiting reactants and things like that. And you'll all be like super happy that you learned it. Um, and I'm not doing it uh, just because it's going to make you super happy. I mean, I am sort of, but we do this style of stoichiometry problem all semester. So it's important to kind of get grips of like what we're doing. It really doesn't hit you until this uh, chapter 15 when you have to start doing it over and over and over again. But 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. I'll have to do this over and over and over again. So these are kind of notebooks you're supposed to have. Uh, this is a comp notebook. If you didn't bring one, that's fine. We'll figure it out. I like the graphs. Did you get, you got lines? Yeah. It doesn't matter. We're not going to actually, when I have you guys graph stuff, your hacks, huh? Oh, that one's pretty. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, is this too pretty? <laughs> no. And you don't have to use a blue pen either. You can use colored pens, like all kinds of colors. Yeah. I love color. It's awesome. Um, the way I find stuff in my lecture notes is I change the color and I'm scrolling along and oh, that's it. I don't even know what I'm looking for. I just find the color and I'm like, that's the color. Okay. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to flip this on, on the front. You're going to need to put your name, right? Uh, course name in the semester. Now your personal information, I always tell people don't ever put your personal information on the outside because you never know, like the person next to you might be a stalker. Like I always say, a romantic walk on the beach is only a romantic walk on the beach when both people know about it. Otherwise, it's stalking, right? That's kind of the situation here. So put the information on the inside. Um, it, it kind of says, and this is actually posted on Canvas. We're not doing this experiment. It's just for setting up your notebook, okay? On the inside cover, you're going to write your name, course name, instructor's name, section, and your contact information in case you lose your notebook. You could even put, please contact me, Dr. Kyle Good, uh, and return the notebook, to return the notebook. If you don't really want to put your own personal information. All right. Then you can use your number of the pages. Now, you can write on both sides. Go ahead. What's the section? Section. Oh, yeah, um, whatever section number this is, I forget. Um, let's see, 57195? That'll help people identify where to take the book if they don't know the other information. Um, yeah, so upper right hand corner with page numbers. Like if, you, if you're okay with writing on both sides of the page, then you can put one on the front and one on the back. Then. Okay? Don't start doing that yet. All right. I personally only like to write on one side of the page, so it says there, right? Fronts of pages only. But if you like to write on the back, then fronts and back. You won't fill up the whole thing. In organic chemistry, it's not unusual for in a semester to use one or two of these. Like fill it up. Because you have lots of graphs and data that you just keep pasting on every page as a new graph or chart or something. So it just takes up a lot of space. Okay, so. You should only write in pen, and then you can do the following, right? You're gonna add a table of contents. Now it says on the first page of your lab book, add the title table of contents. If it already has one, you don't have to. You don't have one, most of them don't have one. And anyways, like oftentimes they'll list the table of contents over here and it's got like eight lines on it. It's just not enough, right? So go ahead, and I usually say set aside the first two or three pages for table of contents and then start numbering after the table of contents. You don't have to do it that way, but it's nice if you don't number the table of contents, because then page one is the first experiment. So here's what you're gonna do as an example. Okay. That's what it's gonna look like. On the left side, you'll have page. On the right side, you'll have the date. The pages are the pages in the notebook that you use, and sometimes you don't know the ending number. 
Because you come in to do an experiment and then you record data and then you're going to tape stuff in. You don't know how much junk you're going to stick in here. Like this experiment we're doing next week, you're going to generate probably two or three pages of graphs and you're just going to want to stick them in your notebook. Well, you don't, you don't want to stick them in the notebook. I want you to put them in your notebook and I want you in the sense that it's important that you do it. <laughs> right? That's not. Most people are just like, I just don't want to do that. But that's okay. We'll get over it. The date is the day you do the experiment, right? Now, I personally tell students, that, you see how that date is kind of completely fills it up? There are experiments that we do this semester that last two weeks, right? So you should leave a little bit more space for the date. You know the start date always. You don't actually know the days you're going to do the experiment all day. Because like some days we'll do an experiment, we'll go on spring break, and we'll come back and we'll pick it up. Well, might do a worksheet. We're waiting for things to crystallize out a solution, and if they don't crystallize out a solution, you're not going to do anything. <laughs> right, so you don't know exactly what the dates are always. Uh, but you always know the start date, so you can put the start date, but you should also put the other days that you work on the experiment. And then leave some, like a line between each one when you're putting them in, because there are those times you have to come in and write additional page numbers and stuff, okay? Questions about that? All in pen. If you screw it up, it's okay, you're stuck with it, but you screwed it up, it's okay. Who didn't bring a notebook? One, two, three. You guys are lucky, you actually have enough. And if you really want to swap it out with one of these, you can. This is the leftover. Last semester I got a great sale on notebooks, so I bought like two, three cases of them. All right. Now, these are the things that need to go on the first page of your experiment, okay? Um, sorry, does this thing work? Let's see. Oh yeah, I don't want to see all that stuff yet. Let me, let me write a little note here, just on the bottom of this. There are certain things that'll have to be in your notebook before you start, okay? Be the title of the experiment. This will be on the first page of the experiment. So let's say you're starting on page three, right? And on page three, you'd have the title, you'd have the purpose, the porpoise, um, you'll have materials and hazards. I think the syllabus actually says to do hazards than materials, but um, you'll find this out in organic chemistry. Uh, you don't know the hazards until you looked up the materials. <laughs> so that's kind of the order you do things. Yeah. Um, so uh, in, o in OCHEM, it's, it's much more, like the hazards are severe, like uh, do not inhale, you'll die. You'd be like, oh. And there's like symbols, like skull and crossbone symbols, like yeah. Do not mix with water, you'll die. Actually, it causes fire, you know, there's all kinds of flammable with water kinds of things. This lab, there's probably not anything like that. Unless you want there to be in the, you know, figure out a way to do it. And then you're gonna have the procedure. And then you'll have data tables. Now, procedure really depends on how much detail you need to do an experiment. For this experiment we're doing next week, I have videos for you to watch, right? And I tell you not to try to write everything down. Watch the video so you know what you're supposed to do. And a lot of it is tech, it's tech based, right? So you're gonna be using equipment that has like features that you're common, have, that are common knowledge. Like when you see this button, what does that mean? Play. What does this one mean? Record. This one means pause, <laughs> right? There's like, you don't have to, like, you could just say start recording and you don't have to draw the symbol because you, it's going to be record, <laughs> right? I'm just saying those things. 
Okay, so, it, oh, that's a 21, actually, huh? Yeah. Sorry, that's a sloppy. That's a pause. And 12 or 4. Huh? Or 12. Or 12. Just leave it alone. <laughs> leave it alone. <laughs> I know it's horrible. I could have typed it. It would look a lot better. That's why I type everything. Um, yeah, so those are things you'll have to have in your notebook. This is known as the pre-lab. So when is it supposed to be done? Before lab. Okay, now not to confuse this, but every experiment also has a pre-lab with it. And a pre-lab, there's two kinds of pre-lab. This is the pre-lab notebook work, okay? In the syllabus, it kind of lays out, this is what should be in each section, so you can read that. Then there's also the pre-lab assignment, which is the part of the, that comes out of the experimental procedure that you'll download and print. So I'm not gonna print those things for you, but you're, you're gonna have pre-lab assignment with each experiment. And, and this is actually what I do a lot of the times. I give you pre-lab assignment, you do it, you turn it in, and then I give you a quiz. And it's only one or two of the exact same questions. So if you just wrote it down right before class, you won't remember. So you have to try to do it a little earlier and look at it. So I usually do a pre-lab quiz, and that takes the place of the pre-lab points. Are the data table part of the pre-lab? Yeah, sorry, that's supposed to go all the way down. 